a paddlefish? I've never heard of that. But I do think I have some friends that might be able to help me figure that out. Hey guys! How are you guys doing? Good. All right. I got a question for you. What? Do you know what a paddlefish is? I don't. I don't know. No, maybe let's learn about it. You never heard about a paddle? It. Let's learn about it. You know what? I've got an idea for us too. We might need to imagine what a paddlefish might be. I think it has two tails to paddle. What? Two tails? What do you think? <laughs> well, I think um, like the shape of it is like sort of shaped like a paddle. Ooh, maybe. I got an idea. What if we imagine what we're imagining, but put it on paper? But how? There were so many good ideas going around. We imagined habitats that the paddlefish might live in. We also thought about what shapes and colors they may be. Harrison gave his paddlefish strong jaws with sharp teeth. Julia's paddlefish was a lot more social and hung out with some friends. Noah's paddlefish got his power from a wave of his paddle-shaped tail. And Leo's paddlefish was an integral part of an entire Amazonian ecosystem. I think we did pretty well, but all this imagining has me wondering a little bit more about paddlefish, so I think I know just the place to go. Wait, where is she? Where is she? What, what? The Tennessee Aquarium has had paddlefish in their collection for many years, so I figured this would be a great place to learn about our mystery animal. But even better, I ran into Dr. Bernie, a scientist at the Tennessee Aquarium Conservation Institute who wrote the book on paddlefish. Well, maybe not the whole book, but a full chapter on this North American freshwater fish. Lucky for us, he had some extra time, so I decided to get his opinion on the paddlefish creation that I came up with earlier. He was blown away. He was so impressed by my drawing that he actually invited me to get a look at the real thing. <laughs> I thought he'd never ask. As we headed up to the exhibit, he shared some amazing facts about the paddlefish. They've been around more than 100 million years. They can get up to six feet long. And their skeletons aren't made of bones. They're made of cartilage, like our nose and our ears. The paddlefish was starting to sound even more amazing than I could have ever dreamed, and I was ready to take a look. Little did I know that it was going to be a much closer and much wetter look than I thought. But he had all the necessary gear for me to come face to face with the fish of my dreams. While I was suiting up for my big dive, Dr. Bernie told me even more about the paddlefish. He said that these fish were ram ventilators, which means that they need to swim continuously to breathe, similar to many sharks. He explained that paddlefish eat in a very interesting way, so their gills are a little different than other bony fish. Paddlefish are considered filter feeders. Now, I wasn't sure what he meant by that, but he promised it was much better to see it in person, so he wanted to keep that part a secret. I couldn't hold in my excitement any longer. I was ready to dive in. Okay, cool. As I descended into the exhibit, my imagination was going wild. Suddenly, I was in a sea of new animals to explore, and it seemed I was the one being watched. I started to wonder if I would even know which of these fish was the paddlefish, even if I was looking right at it. And just then, I saw it. In all its fishy glory, it was beautiful. It was strange. This was definitely the paddlefish. Dr. Bernie was right about its size. They were almost as long as me, and these were small paddlefish. He also said that they are considered prehistoric fish because they haven't changed much in the millions of years that they've been on Earth. And from what I could see, he was right. But the thing that stood out the most was its paddle. No wonder it got the name Paddlefish. Earlier, I learned that their giant paddles, or rostrums, actually have a very special purpose. When a paddlefish is on a hunt for a meal, it uses its paddle like an antenna. 
The paddle is full of tiny little receptors that can pick up small electrical currents. What are those currents coming from? Well, from small fish, tiny insects, even zooplankton, which are microscopic organisms in the water. Once they locate some bite-sized snacks, the real show begins. With one giant gulp, they scoop up their food. Using structures called gill rakers in the back of their throat, like a pasta strainer, they can filter out all the water and swallow the food down. Now I understand what Dr. Bernie was saying. That makes them filter feeders. Oh, this fish was more mesmerizing than anything I could have ever made up. But there was no use having all of this great information if I couldn't share it with my friends. It was time to resurface and get back to dry land. I thank Dr. Bernie for his time and all of the fascinating facts, and I headed back. Whoa, that was fast. That was almost as amazing as a paddlefish. Okay guys, I just got back from a really cool place. I went to Tennessee Aquarium and we actually got to see a paddlefish and I brought it for you to see. You ready? Did you see the picture? Look at it! This thing, they say that it's like a shark because it's got a cartilaginous skeleton. So like our nose. Oh yeah. That's what it's skeleton's made out of. And our ears. Yeah, I don't, oh, oh wait, I don't have one. <laughs> this fish has been around for a hundred million years. I know, that's so crazy. Wait, wait, wait till you see this. Whoa! Whoa! That's what it did. Okay, well, that's it. There we have it. We know exactly what a paddlefish is now. And, I mean, I don't think I was that far off, right? Come on, guys.